Hello everyone, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see what is daemon set, its concepts, and we are going to see a demo on the same as well. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. What is a daemon set? We will understand the daemon set by comparing it with the Kubernetes deployments. Normally, in Kubernetes deployments, we will be running our application instance in the form of pods. Based on the number of replicas we specify in the deployment, required pods will spin up accordingly in the available nodes. In this case, the number of replicas is 2, which is spinning 2 pods in 2 worker nodes. Whereas a daemon set is another Kubernetes object just like deployments that runs a copy of pod in all the nodes. As the nodes are added, daemon pods are added to them. When the nodes are removed from the cluster, daemon pods are removed from them as well. That is garbage collected. If you want to delete all the daemon parts, you need to delete the daemon set object itself. But why the daemon parts are not scheduled in the master node? We will discuss the same in the upcoming slides. Why daemon set? What is the use of running daemon set? One of the best use case of daemon set is application monitoring and logging. The main purpose of daemons is to collect information about the other objects within the cluster and it can improve the performance of the Kubernetes cluster by distributing maintenance tasks and support services. Let's say you are running two applications in your cluster. A daemon set when deployed with monitoring agents helps to absorb the monitoring metrics like CPU memory, storage, etc. from the below applications. It then projects the same in the monitoring dashboard. So this daemon set helps to monitor the performance of application 1 and application 2. Use cases of daemon set. Some of the use cases of daemon set are running a cluster storage daemon, running log collection daemons, running monitoring daemons, running pod networking daemons. And these are some of the third party solutions in the relevant use cases. How a daemon set works? Whenever a daemon set object is created, it is the default scheduler that creates the relevant parts in each nodes. As highlighted in the earlier slides, daemon set is not scheduled in the master node. It is because a restriction called taints being applied in the master node and so the pods are not scheduled in the master node. Daemon set respects taints and tolerations. We will be discussing taints and tolerations in a separate video with more details. How to create a daemon set? Actually, there is no direct kubectl commands to create a daemon set. We have to create it using deployment manifest only. Once you execute this command, it will create a deployment YAML manifest. Then you have to use this manifest so as to create a daemon set object instead of deployment. Sample edited file will be like this. Here the kind should be daemon set instead of deployment. And finally, apply the daemon set definition 
to create the same in the cluster. We will be doing this practically in our demo. Now, let us understand the daemon set YAML manifest a bit more in detail. Daemon set definition has four important top level fields. They are API version, kind, metadata, and spec. For the daemon set, the API version should be apps slash v1 and the kind should be daemon set with the D and S in uppercase. The metadata field holds the name and the labels for the daemon set itself. Under spec, you have two important fields. They are selector and template. Next, under template section, we need to mention the pod definition. This pod definition tells us that it will create a single container pod with FluentD image. FluentD is one of the third party logging solution. In the selector field, you need to mention the pod labels in order for the daemon set to identify the correct pods for its management within the Kubernetes cluster. In our case, the pod label and the selector label matches properly, which is app colon logging. Now, let us connect this YAML with the deployment architecture. Towards your right, you can see a daemon set named logging with the label environment colon development. And here you can see the connections. You can also see the connections of selector labels and the pod template definitions. The selector label and the pod template label should match each other. Since this is a daemon set, its pods will be running in all the available worker nodes. Now let us see a demo on how to create daemon set using kubectl commands. Step number one, access and inspect the Kubernetes cluster. Just to save the time, I have consolidated all the commands in a notepad and the same is available in the video description. This is our master node where I have connected to the Kubernetes cluster. Cluster info command gives the details of your cluster. We have got the response, which means we are able to access the cluster. Now check the nodes and pods. Our cluster is running with one master and one worker node. Now just check all the control plane components are running in the cube system namespace. Yes, all the components are running. Step number two, create and modify the daemon set manifest using the kubectl command. Since there is no direct commands to create daemon sets, we are leveraging on the deployment commands. Use this command to create a deployment manifest and modify as per daemon set configurations. Now create a file called as daemonset.yaml. Just paste the manifest which you got it from the previous screen. Now modify this manifest. Here the kind should be daemonset. And you remove all the unwanted lines. Make sure that all the other parameters are correct.
Step number three, create the daemon set using the manifest file from step number two. Since we have only one worker node, this manifest will create only one daemon pod. Just apply the daemon set.yml which you got it from step number two. Yeah, the daemon set object is created now. You can see the daemon pod is created in worker node number one. You can also see the daemon set object that is created within the cluster. Now we can see what are all the taints that was applied to our cluster. So this command shows that the master node is tainted. This is why the daemon parts are not scheduled in the master node. Step number four, add a worker node number two to the Kubernetes cluster. Once you add the node, automatically a daemon part should be created by the daemon set in that particular node. In order to join a new node to the cluster, we need tokens from the master node. So these commands will generate the same. Here you can see a new token is generated. Now you have to inject that particular token to this command to generate the join command. Here you can see the join command is created. Now execute the join command in worker node number two. Now you can see node two is joined into our cluster. So this would have triggered the second daemon pod automatically. Yeah, it is created in worker node number two. Now we have two daemon parts for two worker nodes. Step number five, delete the worker node number two this will remove the daemon pod in that specific node. Before deleting the worker node number two, just stop the kubelet process in the worker node number two. You can see the daemon parts are running in two worker nodes. Now just delete the worker node number two. Now the worker node number two is deleted. In couple of seconds, the daemon part which is running in worker node number two will also get deleted. Now you can see the part number two, which is running in worker node number two is also gets deleted. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video.
Thank you from VSparks and thank you for watching this video.